Hey, it's Glenn, and I can't sleep. Um, I was sleeping. I slept. I've been sleeping weird all weekend. It's Saturday night, technically. What time is it? 10.43 p.m.? Um, yeah, like earlier, I was working on website stuff, and I just got hit with utter exhaustion, like I couldn't even keep my eyes open, so I just went to bed, because I feel like I was about to fall asleep right there at my desk, sitting up, if I didn't, like, like I was so tired I could barely get my clothes off without just falling on the floor and passing out, I don't know why, um, but yeah, I'm contemplating things like, you know, I've talked a lot in this series in my I Can't Sleep videos in particular about like deep time and infinity, but I don't know, today I'm really think I'm focused on like, um, more immediate time, like, lifetime time, like, I, you know, my mother died five years ago today, which, you know, I've had so much going on, I've been, uh, you know, circumstances beyond my control. I've been back in survival mode for weeks, if not months. Yeah, probably since December, and it's March as I'm recording this. Um, just unexpected financial issues in uh, so I wasn't really thinking about today being the fifth anniversary of my mother's death. Fifth? Is it really five years? It doesn't... I'm gonna do math in my head real quick. Yep, five years. She died in 2019, and it feels like... Maybe not yesterday, but three days ago. <laughs> you know, it feels like three days ago. <laughs> because that's a particular way that things can feel. Because, um, I don't know, you know, like... <laughs> anytime I sit down to do one of these videos, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. Um, there's so many things on my mind, and one or the other of them is going to come out of my mouth, or something completely different. But it looks like, um, this is kind of, this is what I'm talking about, at least for the moment. Um, but yeah, it, it has me thinking about time and other things, like, you know, because that's one of the things, the thing, I don't know, there are a lot of things about that day that haunt me, about the day my mother died. But one of the things, and this was probably the day before she died, I honestly don't remember anymore what time it was when I drove her to the ER. No, I think this was the day before. And she was sick and not getting better. Like, I was worried about her heart failing and I insisted that we go to the ER, middle of the night. I was like, let's not wait until morning. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she never wanted to go, but... I think by then she'd learned that I was always right. <laughs> when it was time to go to the doctor, but she also knew she was dying. She didn't, and that's why she didn't want to go. 
and she didn't say that as much, you know, she didn't say it in those words, but one of the things that haunts me the most is on the way there, like I remember exactly where I was on the freeway when she said this, like, Because we hadn't talked about her dying. It's just, you know, mom is having another emergency and we have to go to the ER and she'll probably be in the hospital for a few days or a couple weeks and get this sorted out. Like usual, I mean, it had been years. It had been six years. Almost six. Well, yeah, I guess she started getting really sick in 2014 but 2019 that's when uh, that's when she died so going up on the overpass and mom just says I just thought I'd have more time and I was of course like you know let's not be fatalistic let's you're gonna be fine. I said that to her as she died. Like, well not the last time. She died three times that day. That was traumatic. <laughs> like, I don't know. This isn't, I don't want this to be a depressing thing. It's not, like, I'm just, um, you know, there are some painful moments that I constantly relive. Um, yeah, you know, so, I mean, but let's move on to something um, else. Like, let's, <laughs> like, because you know when people die, and I, Matt and I have discussed this a lot since his father died, that it seems like whenever someone dies, there are little bits of magic around that event um, and those I think are life-affirming they're spooky but cool <laughs> like Fox Mulder like the X-Files spooky but cool moments little bits of magic like um, I don't know. I don't know if I want to talk about some of the things because it's so, like, weird that no one would believe me. But, you know, more subtle things. Like, one, my mom, when uh, one of her friends died, like, she was just thinking about her all day. For, like, she just started thinking about her intensely. And it was like so overwhelming that she had to lie down on the couch and just think about her friend. I think it was her roommate from college or something. I don't know exactly, but then the phone rings and she gets the news that her friend has just died. And like, um, when her mother died, you know, it was my 13th birthday, and we were having a thing, like, and mom drops everything, starts packing, <laughs> and my dad thinks she's crazy, like, she was. I mean, we're all crazy. We're all mad here, but... But in this particular instance, you know, my mom was like, my mother's gonna die. And goes to Houston, gets there just in time to say goodbye to her mother. Next morning, my dad lets me know, my lets me and my sister know that Mima had died. Um... But mom was ready, she was packed, had the suits ready, like, just knew. And then, one month later, when her father died of grief, 
um, like, you know, the doctors, like, he went, he had, like, a toothache or something, he went into the hospital and went into a coma, and, like, the doctors were like, there's no reason that he should be dying right now. He's dying. He just doesn't have the will to live. So yeah, my grandfather died of a broken heart. But right before all of that went down, my mother had this crazy dream that like my granddad, my granddaddy George was laid out in a glass coffin in the forest like Snow White. <laughs> And, uh, my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, was just kind of, you know, she had this mischievous expression, and she said she had that, and she was wearing the clothes she'd been buried in, and just kind of, like, looked amused, looked giddy. And she went up to the coffin and got my grandfather up and they ran off into the forest together and my mother then knew my granddad was going to die. And then he did. And, <laughs> you know, I mean, those, those are weird things, little bits of magic, like, um, like when my dog, who I grew up with, died. Barney. who honestly was you know as far as my heart is concerned he was more of a brother to me than a pet like we went and played outside together we had all the same friends you know like he was one of the neighborhood kids and he was there when I was a teenager, he'd be my Chewbacca in the passenger seat of my car, sticking his head out the window when I was driving. Like, I, the, Barney and I grew up together, and when he died, like, he was still... Like, I made the decision that I don't, I wouldn't make this decision today. I thought I was making the right decision when I moved out and got my own apartment to leave Barney with my mother and sister. Because in my mind, then he was losing only one person rather than two. I thought I was making the right decision, but looking back on it, I think that hurt him, like, he was my dog. Like, he was my dog. I earned him by passing math one year in school. But yeah, when he died, I had that overwhelming, had to lie down on the couch, it's like my whole apartment was filled with his presence. And I had to lie down on the couch, and I just started crying, because it's like I knew. I knew Barney had just died, and my mother knocks on the door a little while later, like, she didn't want to tell me over the phone, but she knocked on the door and I just told her I knew that Barney had died because he told me. You know, like, I had... A very similar thing with, um, when my cousin Ori passed away 
suddenly. And it wasn't the day he died, it was the day before his funeral that I couldn't attend. And You know, just because I couldn't afford to. I couldn't afford... Because, you know, it was... I was driving Lyft and struggling to survive at the time. It was... Shortly after my mother died. You want to say he died the following year? No! She was still alive. No. No. Because I remember telling my mother, I think, um, I think it's when my cousin Jason died that I told my mother. So Jason died before my mother. I mean, all of these people died, um, very close together, like with, within months of each other, someone else would die, there would be another major death. But when my cousin Ori died, this was after my mother. Because I was driving Lyft and tr struggling to survive, because I wasn't able to get a proper job, because no one wanted to hire me, because I'd been a caretaker for six years, and my resume was in terrible shape, <laughs> like... But, the night before the funeral, you know, I won't get into detail, but, And I mean, you, you should, the things I'm not telling you because they sound too crazy, you know, <laughs> just imagine those little bits of magic. But the night before my cousin Ori's funeral, we hung out, <laughs> you know, like, he was there. And, you know, like, whether... <sighs> whether that event was really as I perceived it, or was a grief-induced all-senses hallucination, it was a powerful moment for me. It was a powerful night when I got to spend one last night with my cousin Ori, because we used to do that all the time when we were little kids. We'd spend the night at each other's houses and just get into trouble, you know? <laughs> we were very mischievous kids. But yeah, so, little bits of magic, I got to say goodbye to my cousin Ori, directly. I at least got to have that, um, perceived experience, so, you know, and that's not even like, so today, I wasn't even, I think that's kind of the point I was getting to. I go off on tangents and I can't sleep videos, that's sort of the whole point. <laughs> but, so today, it's like, yeah, I'm like, you know, tears are not bad. Like, you know, like Gandalf said, not all tears are an evil. It's, it's when you have more emotions than your body can contain, and they kind of start overflowing. They leak out of your eyes. 
So you can have happy tears, you can have sad tears, you can have angry tears. Like, it's just the um, physical representation of emotions that don't fit in this casing. So, I'm not crying out of sadness. Like, it's just, I have some leakage because... <laughs> Because these are powerfully emotional things to discuss, but to me, all the little bits of magic are not at all sad things. They're really powerful and uplifting things. So, like today, again, I will finish that sentence someday. Today, <laughs> not being aware, because I'm just so in my own head about money problems I'm trying to come up with solutions to and just survival mode um, and I just I'm sitting in my car in the driveway because I just had gotten home from trying to sort out a financial situation unsuccessfully. Um, but I just started thinking about my cousin Sandra. Like intensely. And I mean, based on what I've said, no, that's not where this story is going. Like, based on when you start suddenly thinking about someone intensely, this one has a different twist. So. I'm thinking about my cousin Sandra and how close she and my mom were. Just like out of nowhere, just suddenly I am intensely focused on that and I'm thinking I have a letter in a file cabinet in public storage <laughs> that my maternal grandfather wrote to Sandra that I guess never got delivered and my mother had found it and wanted me to give that to Sandra because how cool is that to get a letter from your grandmother decades after she's passed on. Um, and I was thinking about that, and then right then and there, my phone beeps, and it's a text message from my cousin Sandra, who I haven't heard from in years. <laughs> Just right as I'm intensely thinking about Sandra, she's texting me. because she was thinking about my mother and that's when I realized this is the anniversary of mom's death. So even five years after the fact there are these little bits of magic. I mean yeah like even I mean gosh I'm thinking of all these stories now about those magical moments and all the ones on my father's side involve straight up spiritual visitations <laughs> like, um, that are cool like it's like the Clarks make really powerful ghosts <laughs> make really they're really strong spirits because I'm thinking now about my granddaddy sir my dad's dad and you know there have been that, you know, there have been several moments, like even with my granddaddy George, like there have been, I've had these experiences and, you know, I'm not saying, you know, anytime I talk about something like this, I like to clarify. I'm not, I don't need you to believe me. Because, you know, and I myself am open to... these things could all have just happened as hallucinations of one sort or another but the experience was still real and so 
with how real the experience was for me perceiving it, I lean towards thinking that it was a real experience, you know, because I, I'm not prone to hallucination when I'm experiencing overwhelming emotions, you know. And a lot of these things didn't happen when I was experiencing overwhelming emotions. And some of the stuff I'm not telling you could not have been hallucinated. <laughs> because... There was tangible evidence that... What I perceived had occurred. And those are things I'm not going to say just because... Like these, I, you know, if you don't believe me, we can call it a hallucination and still be friends, right? <laughs> but the other ones, if you don't believe me, you just, you think I'm lying. And I don't, I don't want that. Um, because I don't need you to believe me. That's, that's what I'm saying. I'm not asking you to. I'm just telling you what I have experienced. So, like Granddaddy Sir, man. Like... Okay, so here's an example. If I was not in the uh, grip of overwhelming grief at the moment, like it was shortly after he passed away. It was after the funeral, like probably within a week or two. So at the moment, I wasn't thinking about that. Like, I wasn't... I wasn't in a state, I guess, you know, like... But... I was walking back to my car, I'd gone to the grocery store, and... You know, like, I'd been wondering off and on, like, is Granddaddy Sir okay? Like, that kind of thing, like... Just wondering, like... Wishing I knew if he was okay. And so I'm just walking to my car. It's nighttime, you know, it's dark out. There aren't a lot of people at the store. The parking lot's mostly empty. So I'm walking to my car and suddenly I smell Granddaddy Sir's cigar. And I look up, and there's Granddaddy Sir, plain as day, sitting in his truck, and he just smiles and waves. And that was that. And I'm like... <laughs> I guess Granddaddy Sir is okay. <laughs> you know? It's like a weird weird thing, but it was very brief, a very brief encounter, and, you know, my cousin Ori was on my dad's side, it's, um, uh, my uncle Mark, like, my mother saw him after he passed away, and, like, you know, I guess, you know, she was focusing on one thing, my sister was was going through some things, but my mother wasn't really focused on that, and, like, she just suddenly sees my Uncle Mark standing in her apartment. <laughs> my deceased Uncle Mark. Then he's just looking at her and he just points at my sister's room. Scared the hell out of her. <laughs> Which I'm sure he enjoyed. But, um... My mother kind of snapped out of it and was like, I need to pay attention to my daughter. I need to see what's going on with my daughter. Uh, so... Yeah, so, little bits of magic. And Matt experienced some of these, you know, little bits of magic with his father. It's... Uh, and right as I was trying to text Sandra back today, I'm in the driveway of the house, and Matt, I needed to move over, because Matt's backing out of the garage, because he's going to the hospital to see his mother. 
who's in the hospital, in the ER, and not doing well. Like, she's, you know, and his mother and my mother have the same birthday, and I've always thought that was interesting, but, you know, I got scared just realizing that, just in the midst of a little bit of magic, I'm like, I hope our mothers don't have the same death day. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know how she's doing right now. But I haven't heard that she's not just on the path to recovery. I think she's going to be fine today, you know, but she's in bad shape. But, you know, it just was like a... A powerful reminder of where I was five years ago watching Matt drive over to take his mother all this stuff and how she's blowing up his phone and uh, it's like I've been there I've been there and it ended five years ago today So I don't know if y'all can hear Chase screaming and swearing on this video in the other room. That's just kind of a constant soundtrack in this house, is Chase swearing at video game people. Um, I've mostly learned to tune it out, just, you know, I occasionally I'll be editing a video and I'll hear Chase swearing, and I'm like, mm, oh well, such is life. Uh, but yeah, so, I didn't look at what time I started, yes I did, I looked at what time I started this. I think we're good, we're good on time. I'm gonna have some root beer. This is a mug full of root beer. So anyway, it got me thinking about time, like lifetime time, like... Mom's haunting words. I just thought I would have more time. And I was like, um, you know, one of the things I've been doing today before I got tired and fell asleep was, you know, I'm trying to get my, uh, website, my author website functional because I right this minute can't afford my plans of launching a new author website that I've been working on so I have to get the old one functional and so I'm because I can't make links on words there has to be a graphic on the old one because it's just not being kept up by the host I guess but yeah, so, I have an archive relief schedule that goes back, like, I've been publishing fiction now for 25 years, which is a fact that has been confronting me with its reality here and there recently, <laughs> as I get into the year 2024. So there's, like, at the bottom, there's, every year is archived on the release schedule on my author site. And you know, like you click on 1999, and you can see everything that came out that year and when. But I can't make a link to do a 2024 archive page as I go into the year. Because I have the current page, but then as things come out in a new year, I set up a new year archive page. But I can't do it because I can write 2024, but I can't make it a link. So I'm having to do graphics for every year, and I'm having to replace that little table of links at the bottom of each page with graphics. So that you can still access it, and I can clean up my current release page. This is tedious and boring, but it, yeah, there's a point. So... So it was just occurring as I'm making, having to make 26 
of these little uh, graphic buttons to click on the website. You know, and every time I make one, it's like, oh, here's 2002s, but I remember 2002 and what I had published that year, and oh, 2007, I remember that's when the first Metronomes novel came out, and 2008, that's when I started The Legends of Nod, and all this stuff, like, public, publishing-wise, that's when I started The Legends of Nod. And just every year, like, I remember it, and I get into the 2020s, and I'm just like, ugh, the 2020s have not been my friend. So far. I'm hoping, you know, things change. But, you know, it's just like I have a, a reaction, an emotional reaction to every year button that I make. And I make 20... 20, well, is it 25? I don't know how many I'm making, because it's 1999 through 2024, which I guess would be 26 of them, right? Yeah. So I'm making 27 buttons, because one of them just says current. Again, that's not relevant to the story. I'm just thinking out loud and want my math to be right. <laughs> but... Yeah, so I'm sitting there realizing just how long this is taking me and how in every year I was dreaming of the future, you know? Like, I had ideas about where I wanted to be. Like in 1999, contemplating the year 2024, I mean, that was far into the future. That was 25 years into the future. But here I am, and it's still the present, you know? I don't feel like I am 25 years in the future. It's like all of these years were the present, and now they're the past, and I'm archiving them, and... Like, I was just thinking about, you know, when Mom said, I just thought I would have more time. You know, she, that my mother as a child probably pondered the notion that one day she would be an old woman and she would die. That would be far off into the future, right? When she did die, she died in the present experientially. So of course she just thought she would have more time because death is something that happens to us way down the road. It is always in the future, right? You don't realize that in 25 years it's going to be the present. You don't realize that in 50 or 100 years it's going to be the present as you experience it. So we all die right now. We all die now. We all die today. We're all born today. We're all born in the present and we all die in the present. In a moment. And that's kind of, I don't know if I've talked about this on my website before, or my YouTube channel before, but because it sounds like something I would talk about in an I Can't Sleep video, and I don't, I don't have time to just go back and watch all my old rambles, though I wouldn't mind if I had the time. Just going back and seeing what I said and seeing if I agree with it, <laughs> you know? But It's kind of like if you can live your life knowing that in this moment you die, experientially. Like you are on your deathbed. You are in your final moment as a mortal human being. And you're looking back on your life because this is all in the past when you're on your deathbed. Even though when you experience it, it's just as present as your death. 
like, this is me on my deathbed, in my final moment, remembering that time that I was contemplating all of this and recording a video about it. Like, if we live our lives like we're in our life review, like, if we make decisions based on kind of thinking about it as a do-over, like, you might be very tempted to make a choice that you know you're going to regret, or that you, you know maybe isn't the right move, like, like if you have, you come to a fork in the road where maybe you can either take revenge on a person or make peace with that same person and not get justice. You know, like, which one of those choices when you are lying on your deathbed right now do you regret? That's kind of how I'm looking at life. Like, we don't have to regret anything. We can just... It's like if we think we're about to do something terrible <laughs> that's going to scar our souls, the part of us that is in this present moment ending the story, looks back on this moment, and listen to what they wish they would have done, and do it, because that's you, you're in all of these moments. So give yourself a life that you can be proud of in your final moment. It's kind of a I don't know, it's been a really beneficial way of framing things for me when I'm making decisions. Like trying to be a person who I will be proud to have been right now. <laughs> because I die right now. I don't get to undo the things that I wish I hadn't done. I don't get to another chance to do the things I wish I had done. So it helps me to not say no to positive opportunities. You know, it's not a negative thought to say we die now, all time is now. It's a very positive, for me, idea. Because it's true. When we get to that moment, it's now. That's how we perceive it. We're going to be like, I just thought I would have more time. Because I'm supposed to die in the future, not right now. But here we are. Like, here we are. I've been writing and publishing for 25 years. Here we are. Mom has been gone for five years. Like, just like that. So. All time is now. And that is a comfort to me. As much as it's frightening, it's frightening to think, I die now. But, it's comforting when you reframe it to, I live now. I live now. Every moment in my life, I experience now. There is no future. There, because the future is now. You will never experience the future. Even if you get in a time machine and travel to the year 2075, when you step out of your time machine, 
You will be in the future from where you left, but you will be experiencing it in the present tense. So, you never experience living in the future. I don't know why I always text my text. I don't know why I always check my text messages whenever something pops up and I'm making a video. It's very rude of me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I mean, that's pretty much what's been on my mind since I turned on the camera, since I had that little bit of magic in the form of a text message from my cousin Sandra. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was, that was an emotional I can't sleep video, but there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I mean, like I said, I never really know what I'm going to talk about in these things. I mean, lately I've had so many different things on my mind, I could easily make one of these every night if I didn't have to get up and go to work <laughs> during the week. Then talk about something completely different. I mean, a lot of my, I, the things I'm thinking about lately are very political. I mean, it's hard to avoid in an election year that I'm thinking about things like that. But, you know, today, I was just thinking about life, death, my mom and little bits of magic. Thanks for sitting up with me.